Hey guys, today we're going to talk about estimating with whole numbers and decimals. And the I can statement we're still working on is I can solve, using addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, real world problems involving rational numbers. And although this is not going to be giving exact answers in this lesson, um, we're still solving real world problems. We're still dealing with those same operations and rational numbers. So really, we're kind of working a little bit on everything, except for in this case, we might not get an exact answer. And sometimes you're going to find that that's OK. So let's talk about compatible numbers. Those are numbers that you can easily compute, whoops, compute in your head. OK? So not computer. So let's take a number like 1,758 and divide it by 4. Well, I could work that out. And I'll probably get the right answer, but sometimes I might not need the exact answer. Or sometimes I might just want to check my work to see if I'm in the ballpark. So instead of saying uh, 1,758 divided by 4, I'm going to think, what is a number that is close to that, close enough, that when I divide it by 4, I'm going to get an answer that's going to be pretty close so I can go back and check my work. Well, I might think of the number. 1,600, and I can divide that by 4. Now in my head, I can easily make that, or do that, and I know it's 400. So if my answer is somewhere a little bit bigger than 400, because 1,758 is bigger than 1,600, I know that I'm in the ballpark. I might also use estimation when I'm out shopping. You know, if I don't want to whip out, whip out my calculator, and figure out, you know, um, what the exact answer or what the exact amount I'm going to have to pay is. But if I have a good estimate in my head, um, then I'm going to know if I have about the right amount of money. So I know if I actually go out and divide this problem, if my answer is a little bit more than 400, I'm good. If my answer is like 20, I'm probably wrong somewhere. If my answer is 4,000, I might want to go back and look at my work again. So that's why I like to use estimation. Let's look at another problem, 4,365 divided by 7. I could go ahead and work that out and get an answer. But if I want to check it, I'm going to have to estimate. So I'm going to ask myself, what is a number close to 40,365 that when I divide it by 7, I can do that in my head? And I might think of a number like, 42,000. Because in my head, I know 42,000 divided by 7, or more likely, I know 42 divided by 7 is 6. So 42,000 divided by 7 is going to give me 6,000, because 42 divided by 7 is 6. Let's do practice. This is the first of two practice section, uh, sections you're going to have in this lesson. So when you finish the practice session here, hit play again, because we're going to have a little more to talk about. So now it's your turn. Um, I've shown examples one and two. We went through it on the previous slides. But here they are written out on this page. So in your notebooks, um, in the work section, go ahead and do 3 through 11. Now the work I'm expecting to see would be right what you see in these lines here. So show the numbers that you use to divide and your estimated answer. Pause the video. You can go back and watch any portion of this lesson that you need to as many times as you need to. But when you're done with this section, hit play. Now let's talk about rounding. And rounding, we do a lot when we're working with decimals because it reduces the number of decimal digits that, and it helps make computations easier. So let's quickly review place value. You have your decimal here. Here you have the ones, tens, hundreds, thousandths. And those ones you're probably very familiar with. The ones students get mixed up with often are the decimal 
place values. So tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths. For us, we're really not going to go past that too much. However, when we are talking about decimals in class, you will need to use these proper terms. So, if you need to pause the video and write down these place values just so you don't forget, it's a good idea, especially in this le lesson because you're going to be asked to round to specific place values. So, when we round to a specific place column, we look at the digit one place to the right of that column, and we're going to do some examples of this. But when I look to the digit one place to the right of the column I'm rounding to, I'm going to ask myself a question. Is it five or more, that digit to the right, or is it four or less? Well, if it's five or more, I need to round up. That means I'm going to take the round, I'm going to round the specified digit up, and all of the digits that come after that become zeros. And I don't have to write them if they're all zeros at the end. If it's not five or more, if it happens to be four or less, I'm going to round down. And what that really means when you round down is you leave the specified digit alone. So whatever place column you're rounding to, you don't do anything with that digit, and everything after it becomes zeros. Let's give an example to clarify this. Let's round three and sixteen hundredths to the tenths column. Well, to do that, I'm going to look at the tenths column. So that's right here, this one. I might even underline it. And I like to circle the digit I'm going to look at to remind me that that digit is going to become a zero eventually. So I look at the digit to the right, one place to the right, and I ask myself these two questions. Is it five or more, or is it four or less? And in this case, it's five or more. If it's five or more, that means that I need to round up which means I round the specified digit, which is, in this case, the one, up, and all the digits after that become zeros. So, three and two tenths. Now, this zero here is in red because you don't need to write it. But any digit that would have come after that zero is also going to become zero, or after that two is also going to become a zero. Here's another example. Let's round 45 and 124 thousandths to the hundredths column. So that means I'm going to look at the hundredths column, or underline the hundredths column, sorry, and look one digit to the right. In this case, that's the four. And I ask myself the same questions. Is it five or more, or is it four or less? In this case, it's four or less. So that tells me to round down, leave the specified digit alone, and all the other digits become zero. So now I have 45 and 12 hundredths. I don't need to write this zero or any digit that comes after it. Why do I estimate? Well, it's going to help me when I'm doing computation. So here's an example. Let's estimate the sum of, the, of, this, um, of this addition problem by rounding to the tenths column. So what I need to do then is know that I'm rounding the tenths column, so I'm going to underline it, and the number that, or the digit that is in the hundredths column is going to tell me what to do when I round. So, six and sixteen hundredths, I'm rounding to the tenths column, so that's going to become six and two tenths, and twelve and thirty-two hundredths is going to become twelve and three tenths, because if I look in the tenths place, and uh, I'm rounding to the tenths place, so I'm going to look at the hundredths. This six is more than five, so that means that my digit in the tenths place has to go up one. In my second prob, or my second number, I'm rounding to the tenths place, so I'm going to look at the hundredths place. That is four or less. So I'm going to dr turn that into a zero, round down by leaving the tenths place alone. And it is rounding down because now I've got a number that is smaller than the original. And once I've done that, I just add them. And I know 6 and 16 hundredths plus 12 and 32 hundredths is about 18 and 5 tenths. And this little uh, waved 
or swiggled. Um, equal sign means about. And so it tells whoever's looking at your problem that you've estimated your answer. You haven't given an exact. So now it's practice time number two. Go ahead in the work section of your notes. Estimate the following differences or actually it should say following differences, products, or um, quotients or sums by rounding to the ones column. So the ones column is the very first whole number you have for each of these. So you're going to round to the ones column, then estimate your answer. We are done with this lesson, so pause the video and complete one through five. You can go back and watch any por portion of this video or the whole video as many times as you need to.